If you read any writing craft book this year, it needs to be The Heroine's Journey by Gail Carriger. I'm going to talk about my biggest takeaways from this book and also how it helped fix my mindset for my current work in progress. Hi, my name is Caitlin Duncan. I am a traditionally published author and soon to be hybrid author. I post videos here on Mondays talking about the writing process and all the bookish things, so be sure to like this video if you're ready to get started about the heroine's journey. If you've been a writer for any stretch of time, you've heard of the hero's journey. If not, don't worry. Gail goes into an in-depth explanation of the hero's journey before comparing it to what she calls the heroine's journey. The most impactful differences between between the hero's journey and the heroine's journey are the types of beats of the stories and also how they treat side characters. Before I go on, I want to note that the hero and heroine don't necessarily have to identify as male and female characters, and Gail has a whole chapter about defining the terms of gender within this book, which I absolutely love. To distinguish the differences between these stories, Gail defines the different beats leading the story one way, either toward the heroine's journey or the other way, which is the hero's journey. I found that without even knowing that this term existed, that I tend to write heroine's journeys, and because I do enjoy outlining prior to writing my novels, I was trying to fit this type of journey within a hero's journey, which a lot of popular outlining techniques usually follow that journey. I'm going to go over some of the beats of the hero's journey versus the heroine's journey, specifically talking about how they treat side characters because that is the part that really was impactful for me and how the two are different. So when it comes to the hero's journey, in the call to adventure part, you have refusal and aid. Within the withdrawal, aka quest, the hero abandons community. In the return, there is recognition, glory, and isolation. When I read a book or watch a movie based on the hero's journey, I always have that feeling of isolation and that's done on purpose because that's the beats that this journey follows. So we we have a hero who at times may work with others, but eventually at the end of the story they usually have all of the glory to themselves and it's based on what they did as an individual. And here are the beats of the heroine's journey when it comes to side characters. So we have the descent, which is basically loss or separation. The familial network is broken. Withdrawal is involuntary, which is an important distinction. Family offers aid, but there's no solution and the result of all of those things is isolation and danger. When we go to the search, this is usually a forced withdrawal in search of unity. Loss of family means risk, appeal to a surrogate family or network, and attempt to rebuild community, and family and friends rendering aid. In the ascent, or similarly to the hero's journey, the return, negotiation for reunification results in a compromise benefiting all. The network is established or reestablished, revenge Revenge is irrelevant and glory is irrelevant. The heroine's journey is all about building a team, creating community, and forming relationships that help the heroine reach their overarching goal. The mainstream examples that Gail uses to explain the hero's journey versus the heroine's journey, which does play on the gender roles, which I mentioned earlier, which she does explain in the book, is that the hero's journey is explored through the 2017 version of Wonder Woman, and in terms of the heroine, journey, she looks at Harry Potter. Now, thinking of the beats that I just mentioned in terms of isolation versus building a community, you can sort of see the differences if you've seen these movies. And I think Harry Potter has been around long enough that there really isn't an issue with spoilers at this point. And it also, years later, explains while I really disliked the seventh book in the series, any time that Harry was isolated from his community and his friends, I really wasn't feeling that the story was going anywhere. But it wasn't until those moments where he met up with his friends in different parts of the book that I felt like we were back 
on track to his journey. Now in terms of structure and how Gail talks about how to use these beats to put into your novel, when I read craft books I tend to look for a section that says this is how you do it. That's where I work best which is why I love Save the Cat writes a novel and also Jane's Roadmap in Mastering Suspense, Structure, and Plot. Those are the two main plotting books that I use. This book is a little different and at first I was a little disappointed that there wasn't some very rigid structure that I could follow. Gail does a great job of explaining why there doesn't have to be a step-by-step -step way of going through the hero's or heroine's journey. She offers the beats of both of them and even though they do belong in their separate columns, it leaves the writer an opportunity to explore certain beats versus others in that specific chosen journey. And boiling down to that framework really helped me when I was having an issue with my my current work in progress. I was going towards something that didn't feel right in my gut, but I really could not figure out why until I read this book. Overall, I tend to write books that have that sense of community first before resolving the conflict, whether it's with family, friendships, or romantic partners. So naturally, I write heroines' journeys. And while outlining the second book in my Young Adult Paranormal series that was recently reverted back to me, which I will be indie publishing later this year, there was something catching me. I couldn't quite put my finger on it though. At the end of this book, there is a sense of loss for my main character, Maggie, and I wanted to lead up to what's going to happen in book three, but I really had to set the stage for her journey in that book. Initially, I was setting up more of that isolation, revenge type of plot, but it just didn't seem right. It had nothing to do with what I had already created for this novel, which is a heroine's journey and I was veering off to the hero's journey without even knowing it and that's where I caught myself up. The path she needs to go on is still there but her motivation needed to be changed from revenge to redefining what she is looking for and in that redefinition she is going to be utilizing her community and her family to help get her there. She is not going to shed them away and just take on the big baddie without anyone else. So in that small shift of my mindset and her motivation, I brought myself back onto the path of the heroine's journey. And moving forward with any of my books, if I get that feeling again, I know what I need. I have the beats available to me to bring myself back on track to where my story needs to go. If you want to learn more about Gail herself and talking about the heroine's journey, I found this amazing podcast episode on the Rebel Author Podcast, which I will link in the description box below for you to check out. It is absolutely phenomenal and as you can tell I would highly recommend reading this book. At the very least it can open your mind to the different types of stories out there and also something to add to your writerly toolbox. I have a whole playlist of writing craft book reviews for you to check out if you are interested in more and also if you enjoyed this video please give it a like because it really helps me out. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos and I'll see you soon.